Can we get some mood lighting? I mean, it, it's scary, so we need the lights off. All right. So the presentation is WooCommerce not so scary. It, this is basically a different take on your WooCommerce 101, but having a fun theme to hopefully not make it so scary. My name is uh, Scott Anderson, and uh, let's get started. Seriously? All right. So, any fans of Monty Python, the Holy Grail here? <laughs> this is supposed to be a happy occasion. Okay. So, things that we're going to make not so scary. I'll talk a little bit about myself to show you I'm not so scary. We're going to spend less than 60 seconds on what is e-commerce and WooCommerce to make sure we're on the same page. What's the point of all of this? And then we'll get into product types, ways of selling, um, talk a little bit about payment processors, allow for a little bit of time for questioning to talk about the slides, and then we're actually going to work on creating a really simple WooCommerce store. So the theoretical, the practical. So a little bit about myself. Um, Five years as a developer, I've been working with WooCommerce for three plus years now with various clients from online schools to just your mom and pop shop wanting to sell some handbags. Um, some other important stuff, I think I know what I'm talking about, maybe I do, maybe I don't, but let me know at the end of the day. Um, I, I don't know why we're still reading this, but we'll move on. So what is e-commerce? Yeah, here's a definition for it. E-commerce is basically business that's done online, according to dictionary.com. If you don't know what it is, that's what it is. So moving into what is WooCommerce, WooCommerce is our ability to add e-commerce into our website. WordPress is a very expressive platform, our CMS that we can use to write blogs about our dog, we can do it to talk about our corporate 4K, 5K run. Uh, we can do it to proctor online courses. And we can also do it to sell content. We can use this to sell books. We can use this to sell medicinal goods. We can use this to do just about anything. So at the end of the day, what WooCommerce is, is it is the best plugin to do e-commerce on WordPress also known as the Holy Grail. So what's the point of all this? Why, why, do, why, do, you, why do you care about e-commerce? Our clients need to sell their product. Okay. Why do you care about e-commerce? Second reason to sell. Make money. Make money? Anyone else? Anyone have a different answer other than make money? Yes? Not being liable for it. Not being liable. Not if you're going to develop something personally, you don't have to be entirely liable to like outsource that liability for processing, for processing and payment. Okay. But at the end of the day, what's the point of doing e-commerce though? To make, money. to make money. So what's the point of all this? To make money. We can sell online to a global audience. That's the point of e-commerce. You want to make your money. So. When it comes to product types, there are a lot of different things that you can sell online. All, you know, the adage in 2006 is an online store was selling a physical good. Physical good could be some handbags, so, you know, basically your Etsy shop of, two, of, of today. You can use it to sell hats, bags. But nowadays, you can do so much more than that. So there are two main classification types within the e-commerce space. You basically have your physical goods, such as timepieces, canines, socks, bow ties, fezzes, tardises, sonic sunglasses, you know, anything that's a physical object. You can sell through WooCommerce. 
And the beautiful part about WooCommerce is it hand, they offer a lot of services that can automate the shipping charges, automate the tax charges, through pretty much everything that's integrated within the platform. And we'll show a little bit of that in a little bit. The other type of product, products you can sell are digital goods. These can be ebooks, online courses. You can use them to sell digital assets. If you're a developer, you can, all, you can use this platform to sell your plugins, sell your themes, maybe your hot new mixtape. And all the, the ability to sell digital goods are also integrated. Just stock WooCommerce. You don't need to do anything fancy. So there are different ways that you can sell within WooCommerce. You can sell it as an individual transaction or as a subscription, recurring charge. In fact, she'll be uh, giving a talk about subscriptions very shortly on uh, how to take it from theoretical to make it lots of money. Precisely. Precisely. Lots and lots and lots of money. Another way you can also use WooCommerce is to manage memberships. So before we start going actually into implementing all these into a store, do we have any questions about what you can do with the WooCommerce platform? Any specific questions at all? So once you've decided what kind of products you're going to sell, then the simple decision is, all right, you set up your store, you, know, you identify what products you're going to sell, now we get to decide what kind of payment processors we're going to choose. There's the three major ones that you can find out there. It's going to be your authorized.net, there's Stripe, and there's PayPal. And for the most part, you can see their, their pricing is pretty straightforward. Authorized.net has a little bit higher upfront cost of being 25 bucks a month just to accept any transaction. Stripe is free. You can just sign up for an account and you're ready to go. PayPal is also free. And as you can see, they're pretty much all identical for the most part when it comes to processing what you're going to purchase. They usually take about 2.9% off the top if it's a US-based sale. And if they're international, that can go up to 4% depending on the currency. And then they all add a $30 fee. And then to integrate these... 30 cents. Huh? 30 cents. What did I say? $30. $30. It's really high. <laughs> but all transactions are pretty much 30 cents um, in addition to the percentage of your sales. And then how these get integrated within WooCommerce itself, you can see Authorize.net, you have to pay $25 a month just to even have an account open. Then you have to spend $70 to get a plugin to even use their services. <laughs> and then you pay a percentage of each transaction. It's a lot of money. Or with Stripe and PayPal, you just sign up for the services and you're ready to go. So before we start actually integrating these different items, we identify the steps. All right, what are we selling? And basically, how are we going to take someone's money? So for the authorized.net, why is that more expensive? What is the reason that they're asking for nearly hundred dollars more than, for than pay? Yeah, how do they so get it? How are they competitive? From the clients that I've worked with, one of them, authorized.net, PayPal and Stripe originated as online platforms. Merc, yeah, they originated as online payment processors, you know, with eBay when it first came out, when you checked out with eBay, how, how did you pay for it? PayPal. Stripe, their, their, their big motto is, developers, develop your apps. Use us to collect your payments. Authorized.net has a much richer history than that. They originated with credit card terminals. A small mom and pop business, you know, if you had operated like a coffee shop, operated a you know, any small business, it would, or even large, um, 
and they had credit card terminals. They still do. And a lot of those people pay authorized.net back in the day when you had to have a dedicated phone line, credit card transactions. So they they built up their brand name is authorized.net. We you use us to collect payments for your um, for your physical storefronts, your brick and mortar. Why not use us for your online transactions? So that tends to be one of the bigger reasons why they do that. Because when it tracks all your transactions, you can use the same software. It works best when you have a physical and an online entity. Because if you have a brick and mortar store with an authorized.net terminal, it makes sense that you're one, you're, you'll want to use authorized.net on your e-store. Because now, you're, now your bookkeeper, or if it's small enough yourself, you're not logging into PayPal, you're not logging into Stripe and Authorize.net to do your monthly book. And that's kind of a part of the premium with them. Um, anyone have? Can I add to that? Please. Okay, so Authorize.net um, goes directly to your bank. In order for you to use Authorize.net, you must find a merchant, and most banks are merchants. The problem with that is if you, if you use your bank as your merchant for part of that, and not authorized.net directly, then you're gonna have a hard time leaving that bank, okay? So if you go to authorized.net, they themselves can be a merchant, and a merchant is a person who handles the problems that come around with so-and-so's uh, American Express card failed. And so you can call them and they can help you determine why. So um, it was very popular at one time because it went straight to your bank, I don't know if it's always you know, the best solution today because they've become very expensive now to use authorized.net. But just think of every WooCommerce does not keep the credit card information. That information goes somewhere else, either to an aggregator like Stripe, and they hold the money, and they keep secured, they're responsible for all the security around the credit card information like you heard about with the lawyer, right? It's not on our site. Or it goes directly to your bank. And when it goes directly to your bank, a merchant has to handle that transaction. So authorized.net goes straight to the bank. Your money through Stripe or PayPal goes to PayPal or Stripe, and they hold it and then put it in your bank. So they're the middleman. Okay? <coughs> That's the layman's term. It's perfect. Not so scary after you describe <laughs> it. There you go. Any other questions before we actually look into what all these concepts actually mean when we get into the dashboard? Or just we want to see proof of the pudding? Yes? Putting it is. now I have a staging website you can go to it's wcjax2018 at showing.org. What this sim simulates is a bare bones WordPress website. It can be one that you just started from scratch. It can be your existing one. Let's say you ran your brick and mortar <laughs> store had their online menu. Now you're about to start. You want to add an additional feature. But what this, the point is, is this is setting the stage of a stock website, no frills. The ability to add WooCommerce to your website is as simple as going to your dashboard and install a plugin. Nothing profound. All you need to, I think, anyone here have difficulties installing a plugin? I think we all can do that. Yeah, I hope. So once you've gone ahead, just go ahead and install WooCommerce. And today, we're going to go ahead and just choose PayPal. Stripe is a great payment processor. Authorize.net, if you happen to be using them for your business, and your business case says that you want to use them as a basically a credit merchant, absolutely go with them. But the reason why I usually encourage first-time clients to go with PayPal is they're just super simple to set up. Usually everyone already has a pay, personal PayPal account. All you need to do is install the plugin, 
click sign in, links your store up immediately. And one easy way to expedite all of this is they also have a plugin called WooCommerce PayPal Express Checkout Gateway. We'll just go ahead and activate that as well. So now we have our website. Today I think I'm going to start selling some of my photos. I'm a photographer, I run a photography business. I'm going to say I'm going to sell a digital product. This could be an ebook, but in my case, they're going to be my images because I think I'm a good photographer. Probably not, but we'll see. today we'll say I am. So now that I've activated my setting, my WooCommerce plugin, we now have the WooCommerce window. We'll go to settings. We'll go ahead and set some address information. I already filled this out, but we our business is located at 123 Main Street, Jacksonville, Florida, 382246. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll sell to everyone. I, I like money, I won't discriminate. Uh, everything's going to be digital, so we'll, we ship to everyone too. Uh, we'll go ahead and enable taxes and tax calculations. Uh, my currency is US. Of course, if you happen to be working for a foreign client, you can quickly search for anything you want, but I'll leave it as the US dollar. And uh, alright, that looks good. And now I'm going to go to checkout and click on PayPal Express Checkout. Now I've already done this, but all you have to do is click API credentials to sign in. And what this will do is it will actually it's a setup link that will take you straight to the PayPal site. Oh dear. No, it's looking right. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and sign in with my PayPal account that I've previously set up in the past. this website to use this PayPal account? Yeah. So I'm right now all I'm doing is just making sure that when someone pays it, it goes in the right bucket. Alright, is this the website that you set it up? Yep, that's me. Boom. Now we already have PayPal set up in our WooCommerce store. So now that we've gone ahead, we've activated the plugin. We made sure our general information about where we're located set up. We did a one-click sign into our PayPal account. Now we have PayPal set up to our website. Now all we need to do is give them something to buy. So you can go to the products window. Let's go ahead and add a new product. Let's call this one Ocean Scene because it's a very vibrant image. We'll call it a stock photo of the ocean front. I will go ahead and scroll down to the product information and it's a virtual item, so I'm not going to ship it anywhere. No need to collect shipping information. It's downloadable. Now there's a downloadable files area. I'm going to just call this ocean. Ocean space. You can upload a file of what you want to give it to them. So this is already a pre-uploaded image of like the ocean scene. I'll go ahead and set a. The regular price is some. It, it's it's priceless. I mean, come on. <laughs> but today and today only, you can get it for a dollar. <laughs> So now, I want to set a product image just you know, so it looks pretty. This is an actual picture of the image with a uh, watermark. It's not yours yet. And then, let's go ahead and publish the product. So 
now if we go to the ocean sea. We have an ocean scape. It's not yours, but it can be. Yeah. So this simulating, you, any of you can go right now and donate a dollar to the petty fund. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and let's uh, we'll only have one in the scene. I had one before. Okay, looks good. I'll go to checkout. Information looks right. Eh, I'll say United States. And we'll continue payment. And at this point, I'll go ahead and sign in with my personal PayPal account. Just because I need to pay for the money. Security log. Mileage may vary. Continue. Yep. There you go. Someone just bought a product. Ocean scene. Now let's make sure it's the ocean space that I bought. Depending on Wi Fi. We just sold the digital product. Is that too quick for anyone? How did you configure the taxes? Did you configure them or the shipping of the of the? Okay, so yes, that we'll go into that part. Um, so WooCommerce, it, we actually have them here as a vendor. WooCommerce it is a conglomerate of various plugins and people. One of them is Jetpack. Now, when you set it up, Jetpack um, has features that when you sign up for an account will automatically tabulate the um, sales tax based off their geographical location. So the sales tax in Florida is slightly different than Georgia, slightly different than Alabama. And their features also include shipping information. So they actually also, would, when you create a physical product, in this case, this one was digital. But if it was, um, if it was a physical good, you can enter dimensions of what size it would ship at, the weight of what it might be, and it will actually tabulate, you know, based off current carrier rates, what that shipping is going to cost. So we didn't set this up here just for the sake of getting something out very quick, but um, it's a, I mean, it's as simple as just installing Jetpack. Um, and within the settings, we can go ahead and actually set those up. But is there any questions as far as just the general setup and getting a digital good out there? Do you ever have any issues with like uh, the thumbnails or adding pictures to the products, just like the resizing of it or anything like that? So, not usually. Um, typically, what I'll tend to do is I'll, I usually open up Photoshop and resize thumbnails myself just for something quick and simple if the client only has two or three products. Uh, usually when you're working with small clients, they don't have large inventory. If that's the case, then I'll just manually resize the images that I want. Um, <coughs> there's an earlier talk today of don't let images weigh down your website. And there are a lot of automated plugins that will resize uploaded images for you. Um, I can't recall some of the names that she threw out. But there are a lot of compression plugins that when you install them, whether you're uploading a post, a featured image, or in this case a product image, you can actually set it up so that it will resize them for you. So typically, I don't tend to have that issue. Um, as long as the image itself is usually square in nature. Um, if you have rectangle, then the way that your product pages might display as can vary. You know, you might have... Can you'll I add to that? If Absolutely. you upload in a 600 by 600 format for your images, your commerce will work a lot better. Yeah, that's not an option, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, what do you work with? with 
Um, it's just like so, um, it's like an outdoor product page. Just some some images or you know rectangular pipes that just have a pretty big height compared to you know other things. And sometimes the thumbnails just cut things off, I guess, when displaying them. But you're needing to display the full height at once. So you can't. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, when it comes to because there's a difference between resizing and then absolutely changing the aspect. Most compression plugins, for the sake of saving space, only though if it if it's 400 by 400 can compress it to 300 by 300. But if it's let's say 200 by 100, it it doesn't. They don't do a good job at stretching it to 200 by 200 unless you want a wide image. Uh, in the case that you do want that to happen, um, from my experience, it's been easier to. Um, overlay that on a canvas with a with a with the proper aspect ratio. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Yes, mm -hmm. add white space to the left, like left or right. You get it 400 or 600. 600. Yeah. So so if let's say you're aiming for 600 by 600 and yours is 200 by 100, then you can create a uh, a 200 by 200 or it was 600 by 200 or 300. Then you can open up Photoshop. Have a canvas size is 600 okay. by 600. Overlay the image, center it, and then choose a complementary background color, or you can leave it transparent um, that complements your theme. Awesome, that's great. Idea. Thank you. <coughs> Anything else you guys are afraid of? Okay. Uh, can category. you show the text? The text bar. Sure. Okay. I was going to say subcategories. Yeah, we can go into categories too. So within the settings, there. So within the um, the settings menu, this is where the default simple selections are. You can uh, how you're going to set the uh, text to be tabulated based off of. Um, a lot of different accounting, different types. The way to integrate um, the automated tax features is by adding an additional plugin of Jetpack. So we will add that in addition to, then you can sign in with your Jetpack account. But once you do that, um, it will automatically tabulate everything for you. So what what we can actually do when you um, We'll go ahead and take a. When you first install WooCommerce, there's a initial setup screen. So I'll go. I'll just go ahead and reinstall WooCommerce, and you can see the the features that will take you step by step through setting up all the automated features. Granted, when you delete this, you're it's gone. Just uh, FYI. Okay. So now, if you didn't know how to install a plugin, you're about to learn. So when you do a fresh install of WooCommerce, what it does is it actually takes you through about a five-step um, for your setup of your site. A lot of the basic settings that I've set up as far as residential address, um, whether I want to have automatic tabulated taxes and uh, shipping charges, all those are actually defined in the setup procedure through here. What you saw was the deactivated portion of it all, but if we activate it now, Pages that were created with WooCommerce automatically delete if you delete 
Chamber of Commerce out of your account, or they the the posts? Yeah, no, no, the pages that create like the the products page, the you know what I'm saying? When you create, when you put in WooCommerce into your account, it creates your pages, your products page, and your checkout page, and your shipping page, and and all that. So I'm asking if when you delete all of that out of your plugins, do all of your pages delete too? Or do you double your your page creation? Um, you know, with like products page one, because you now have two products pages. Right. So the last time this was done, it 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 does inherit the pages that were created. Okay. So we shouldn't have page page one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, do you ever have any experience um, not using? like a car or shipping or pricing, but just um, requesting a quote as you add stuff. Um, like you add products and then at the end you're filling out your info and requesting a quote. And somebody's physically contacting you um, about those products after the fact. Oh, so what you're saying is trying to sell goods that don't have a price right. on it? Right, essentially. Like I know there's a plugin out there for it, I just don't know if there's any native WooCommerce solution for that, or if anybody had experience with it. I think it's. I think it's a paid official one for WooCommerce. It's catalog. Okay. Like catalog mode, I think is what it's classified as. It's an add on, that one's the name of it. Okay. Cool. We can do a quick search for that. Because the one uh, we found was a uh, YIP request a quote plugin, but now other people are saying there's other plugins. Anytime. Uh, a client wants extended services that's outside the stock app, the best place is always to get it straight from WooCommerce because this ensures there's going to be compatibility with the latest releases. So, you can check all of them real quick. Uh, can you recall if there are quoting features within WooCommerce? Yeah, there are. So um, what you do is you go ahead and you create like a, an order. And it's just going to depend on the status that you want or you can turn it in. I mean, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit when I do my slide. And then I have a tax uh, plugin I'll talk about too, outside of Jetpack in addition. We're, we're working together on topics. Right. The, the point of what I was trying to focus on here is just the nuts and bolts if you've never seen the WordPress, then with hers we're going to, it's kind of getting deeper into the trenches as far as, all right, now that we've gotten our store up and running, we can uh, get into the silver linings. So my question when it comes to taxes, was not as much as how to do it, is do you get a, a sheet and then you start to sending taxes to all these different states and counties around the country where people came from? Uh, so it depends what state you're in and what the rules are of how taxes are collected based on whether or not you're shipping there or not. Um, uh, there's a great plugin for that that handles all of that and it knows what state you're origin. See, depending on your state, if you're a destination or originating type of state. So uh, if I have time at the end, I'll talk about that and I'll get into this plugin that just handles it all for you because you don't really want to set all this stuff up being. Too much. But, but I, st I still have to send those money to someone. Yes, or you do. And that's, that's, you know, when you have a lawyer in here and she was talking about setting up your corporation, you're going to have state tax forms you have to fill out and submit. And, um, you know, I'll touch on that too if I can get to that at the end. I'll put it on my slide right now. So at least you have a resource link for it, okay? Anything for the more basic 101s? Is there advantage to the WooCommerce theme or over just picking anything? So there will be some advantages. Um, typically, there are there there are plenty of classifications. Um, typically, what you'll find is if you find a well-designed general purpose theme, like for a small business, they usually will advertise uh, WooCommerce support. The uh, typical marketplace that most developers who don't if you know, let's say you have a smaller budget for a site, you're not going to get a custom design theme. You'll typically have a pre-made one purchase um, through WooThemes uh, or the also known as the Envato Marketplace. 
Um, and when you do a search for themes within there, they'll if they support WooCommerce, they'll advertise that. And all that that means is that they've when they've written their CSS rules, they've spent time on the product pages themselves to make them more flashy. Um, typically, even a site that's not designed, even a theme not designed for WooCommerce, at some point, it, it will still look good. Um, it's just a matter of when you have, let's say, but if you have more, like, a more, let's say you're making a band website, um, like a heavy metal band, so you find a, like, a dark, hardcore style theme, if it advertises WooCommerce support, then that theme on the product pages, they're going to be styled more specific so that the product page, you know, doesn't feel like the product page was slapped onto a website and surrounded by this theme. So um, it does matter, but typically you won't, ha unless you are focusing on being a online store only, um, pretty much any theme typically will have WooCommerce compatibility within it nowadays. Unless you're searching through free themes and then mileage may vary. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you.